Do you crave exciting sports takes and news? Fed up with the same old boring voices you hear on the radio? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you just might be a T Bloomaholic. Lucky for you, it's time for another episode of the T Bloom Talk Show, the number one sports podcast in the world. Settle in, my T Bloomanites, because another episode starts right now. Live from T Bloom headquarters, here's your host, T Bloom. All right, and we're on Nation! Little T Bloom roll call for you. How we doing, folks? Are you good? Are you bad? Does not matter because your day's about to get even better. Here at the T Bloom Talk Show, we're going to go over the whole. NFL Week 15 slate, you already know, and for the first time ever on the T Bloom Talk Show, we'll be having our fourth official guest on, Charles the Eighth. I'll tell you more about him. You'll get to know him a lot more toward once this podcast gets going. But wow, welcome back, little life update. T Bloom's having some car troubles. Goddamn car won't start. Having to walk to work. That's okay. I'm still gonna come to you guys. I'm still here. We still got the podcast to have. But man, my battery won't start. I tried to jump it this morning. I'm not sure if my jumper even works, but I tried jumping it. Still didn't turn on, so I'm not really sure if it's the battery. I'm not sure if it's this. I'm not sure if it's that. So, yeah, that's a little life update, but we're going to take it into Cooksey's Auto Repair in Puyallup, Washington. He's going to take a look at it. He'll get it all better. He has a bunch of times before that. Um, But, yeah, man, nothing like your car not starting in the midst of holidays where you needed to go Christmas shopping. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do whatever. It's tough, let me just tell you that. But regardless of that, we're here. I'm focused in, laser focused on this week 15 of the regular season. The time is winding down in the NFL season, and we got to appreciate every single second that we have left in football season. Because once it's gone, man, it's like a fucking hellhole. I, I got to find things I got to watch. Thank God for MMA and the UFC. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I mean, the NBA is cool and all, but it's really lost its touch for me over the past couple of years, and I don't know. I have a theory on that. Maybe I'll talk to you more about it in the NBA season, but let's get to these games. We're going to start it off with the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. A little bit of a shite show going on with this one as Lamar Jackson will not be playing, and then on the other side of the ball, you do have Deshaun Watson, but he hasn't been playing nearly as impressive as he's been his you know first whatever years. But come on, dude. What are we doing? There we go. Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. Now, this is a little bit interesting because I thought the Ravens would be the favorites, even with Tyler Huntley, but I guess that's not the case in terms of the uh, the Vegas odd makers. Let's go over some stats. The Browns, number 22 in the league in terms of rushing yards per game on defense. They only give up 128.1. The Ravens, they're number two in the league in rushing yards per game on offense. They get 162.2. So you got a bendable Browns run D versus a... Ravens offense that can just run the shit out of the ball and literally hand the ball off every single play and you wouldn't be able to stop it. So I'm going to give advantage over them on the Ravens side. Then you also think about rushing TDs per game. The Browns give up the fourth most rushing TDs per game at 1.3. How do you get a point three? It's the law of average. It's the law of averages, baby. I don't know. On the other hand, the Ravens are the eighth best team in terms of rushing TDs per game with one per game at least. Now you look at the other side of the ball in the Browns offense, the fifth best rushing team in the league in terms of rushing yards per game at 149.5, going up against the second best rushing defense in the league in rushing yards per game. Ravens only give up 81.8. So man, unstoppable force, immovable object, what's going to happen? I'm going to go with the Ravens on stopping the Browns a little bit more than the Browns being able to run on them. We'll see, though, because Sean Watson adds a whole other dynamic. Third weekend, maybe he'll have something else in store for us. It's going to be interesting in that regard. Then you look at even more stats. The Browns, number four in terms of rushing TDs per game. They average 1.4. The Ravens, number 11 in opponents rushing TDs per game. They give up less than one per game, sitting at 0.8. So... The, this Ravens D is a lot more, is a lot 
more prepared to stop the run than the Browns defense. And I think that's going to really show itself in terms of the late quarters in the third and fourth quarter when the Browns defense is just tired and the Ravens are just going to pound the ball out. One last stat I want to give you for this game, which might be the, the determining factor. The Browns are number 23 in giveaways per game, meaning they're the ninth. They give up the ninth most turnovers per game with 1.4. Now, the Ravens are number two in takeaways per game. They get 1.8 takeaways per game. That's just under two. So if you mix in the running game with the Ravens and the fact that they're probably going to get a couple turnovers off of the Browns, you got to give advantage to the Ravens. I don't know why they're underdogs, but that's Vegas, baby. They know more than me. They know what the ins and outs are. They know what kind of cleats players are wearing, You know who's going to be slicing, who's going to be dicing, who's going to be out the night before. They know all that stuff. That's why we leave the odds to them. But I'm rolling with the Ravens this weekend. Next game, the Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. Saturday night game. Welcome back, Saturday football. It's been so long. And it's kind of bittersweet because you know once you start seeing NFL on Saturdays, it's sort of the beginning of the end of the season. You know what I mean? It's It, it sucks, but it is what it is. It's nice for now, but it, it, it what it means is we're at the beginning of the end. Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills. Potential snow game in the mix. Beep burp, beep burp, beep burp. Weather Channel T Bloom coming in to give you all the weather news for this game. It's looking like it's going to be a 31 degree day, 65% chance of snow, and snow early in the day. Now, the difference between snow late in the day and early in the day is when you have snow falling all day, it sort of gets packed up. You got a nice snowball effect. And then when it comes in late at night, real icy, real dicey, and it just adds on to a whole layer of snow. Not going to be a good sign for the Miami Dolphins as they are not a team built to run the ball. you got to run the ball in the snow, especially in these cold weather games in the playoffs. Sleet, rain, you need to be able to run the ball. Buffalo can do that. Buffalo, have they have a fullback at fucking quarterback. they got a guy who can not only run over your biggest guy on your team, but can also run past your fastest guy on your team. Oh, all the while, he can throw 70 yards on a rope down the field to Stephon Diggs at any means. At first, I thought the plus seven spread was a little bit out of control. I thought, come on, Miami's been playing better than that against... They just Didn't they almost beat Buffalo? But then I look at the weather. Man, this is not looking like a good game for the Miami Dolphins. Eight and five, they really need this win for their playoff hopes. Buffalo, they really need this win for that number one AFC seed so they can lock up home field advantage so they can have more games just like this one. I'm going to have to go Buffalo, man. I mean, you got to. How, how could you not? You got to go Buffalo. I mean, Miami's not built to win in this type of weather inclements, and it, it is what it is. Sorry, Mike McDaniel. You got a really good system over there, really good you know, vibes and stuff, but at the end of the day, I just don't see a winning in Buffalo on a snow game and even a cold weather game. Hopefully, for them, it doesn't snow. We'll see, but it's looking like it's going to. We're going to roll with Buffalo. Next game, the Indianapolis Colts versus the Minnesota Vikings. You got the 4-8-1 Colts versus the 10-3 and Vikings. Let's just look at some stats. There's a minus 4 spread for the Vikings. I think that's a little bit low. I think the Vikings are going to definitely hit that. The Vikings are 6-6-1 overall against the spread, 5-4-1 in their last 10, and 4-3 at home. You look at the Indianapolis Colts, 5-8 against the spread, 4-6 in their last 10, and 2-5 and on the road. Not the best of trends, but it seems like the Minnesota Vikings are really going to win by more than four. You got to think. And then it, it, just put this in perspective. Here's another per T. Bloom perfect player prop giveaway. That's a triple P by the TB, the Vikings, number 31 in opponents passing attempts per game. That means opponents throw the ball at least 37.5 times per game against them. Look at the Indianapolis Colts, the number six in opponents, no, number six in passes per game, meaning they throw the ball 36.9 times per game. If you look at Bet MGM right now, the odds of Matt Ryan, the over under in his passing attempts, 33.5. That's four passes lower than the whole than both teams' averages. So you got to think the over's there to hit. Take the over. Matt Ryan over 33 and a half passing attempts. The only thing that's going to keep him away from doing that is if he gets hit and hurt. Which may, <laughs> With that guy's age, you never know. But I'm going to take the over 33.5 passing attempts for T. Bloom's perfect player prop 
giveaway. Book it. Now, obviously, I'm going to roll with the Vikings here. I don't think the Indianapolis Colts really have much of a chance. They're a more complete team. The Indianapolis Colts has just been struggling all year. Jeff Saturday's doing the best he can. I mean, it's just a shite show over there in Indy, and I, and I feel for you you fans over there still trying to get over that uh, Andrew Luck retirement. I mean, man, where would they be with, with Andrew right here? But... That's neither here nor there. Another stat, just, just to sure up the win. The Vikings, they're number eight in takeaways per game with 1.5, and the Colts are 32 in giveaways per game, meaning they're the worst team in the league in terms of giving the ball over. They average two per game, so that should sure up the victory for the Vikings. If it doesn't, that's on them, man. First piece of paper, get the fuck out of here. We got four of them to go through. Let's start with the next game, the New York Giants versus the Washington commanders now if you remember the last time these guys faced each other it resulted in a tie right the washington commanders went on to go to a bye week settle in revamp get juiced up again for the big game the new york giants on the other hand had to go all the way to philly and just get absolutely massacred and dog walked off the field so you got one team who just tied with the team then lost bad to their division rival excuse me on the other hand, you got the Washington Commanders, who tied with the team, the Giants, were like, okay, let's revamp, let's take a week off, really focus in, see what we did wrong, see what we can do better, and just stayed focused on the Giants. So I think the Washington Commanders had the absolute most, um, they had the the most, um, what's, what's the fucking word I'm looking for? The better chance. I mean, when you sit there and you go on a bye week and you have the same you had the same opponent as you did the week before you went to the bye week. Like that's a massive advantage. They didn't take. They didn't set their their sights on someone else at all. They kept their sights right on the Giants the whole week, whole week off. The Giants. They were looking at the Commanders. Okay, we tied against them. They had a shift to the number one team in the league. That's going to take a toll on you. I think the Commanders have the edge in that regard, and for that reason, we're going to roll with the Washington Commanders. Still going to be a good game, though, hopefully. Next game, Los Angeles Rams versus the Green Bay Packalackas. Now, when they first scheduled this game, I'm sure I, they were thinking, Jesus, this, this, when this game comes along, week 15 of the NFL season, you got to think this is going to mean a lot. I mean, this is going to be maybe first, maybe take out the first, swap the first and second seed of the playoffs, or you know, but no, not at all. Los Angeles 4-9, we all know how their season's been. Yes, they beat the Raiders last week with the Baker Mayfield comeback story. I get it. Maybe they got something there. Probably not. The Green Bay Packers, 5-8. and eight. They're still fighting for a playoff spot. That defense is a lot more stout than the Raiders. I doubt they're going to give up a game-winning drive to Baker Mayfield. I doubt they're going to give up much to Baker Mayfield at all. That's why we're rolling with the Packers heavy this week. Aaron Rodgers, look for him to come out, show out, and ball out, and be the old A-Rod that we have come to love and know. So... Yeah, what's next? Tennessee Titans versus the Los Angeles Chargers. Here's a stat I bet you didn't know. God damn, I keep folding this the fucking wrong way. Here's a stat I bet you didn't know, T. Bloom Nation. The Tennessee Titans haven't beat the Chargers on the road since 1992. Now, that was when they were the Houston Oilers. Since becoming the Tennessee Titans... They've never beat the Chargers on the road. The Titans have never walked into the Chargers stadium and beat them on the road ever. So this, this game, if you're going to say it doesn't mean a lot in terms of playoff stance, in terms of playoff berth, which it does because both these teams sit at 7-6, and six, they control their destiny to move on to the playoffs and put themselves in a position for the Super Bowl run. But this means more than that. You got to think. The Titans really want to give over that hump. They want to put their name etched in history as a team who can beat the Chargers at the Chargers Stadium. Now you got one team on the hand, the Tennessee Titans. They've been struggling on D, man. They, they've been getting up a lot of points on D, which over the years, man, that's been one of their focal points. Run the ball, play good D. They're not playing good D. They're, they're running the ball pretty decent, but they're not playing very well, you know, good of D. That's okay. On the other hand, the Los Angeles Chargers, the most inconsistent team in the past 100 years in sports, 
the, the most biggest disappointment of teams, a team that should have won at least one Super Bowl from the time Phillip Rivers has started to now, but they haven't, so I don't really know what we're going to see right here. Chargers are minus two and a half favorites. I think they should win by at least seven. This Tennessee Titans team, the way they've been playing, they look like they, they can't do much. Um, but will they? Probably not. Chargers will probably go down 14 to three going into the fucking half, come back and make it a ball game somehow. We're going to roll with the Chargers. I just, I, the Titans, man, they've been really disappointing me this year. They're a shell of what they used to be. They have Derrick Henry still, but at what cost? We're going to roll with the Chargers, man. The Chargers just look good. They just uh, took it to the Miami Dolphins. We're going to roll with the Chargers. Next game, Cincinnati Bengals, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You got the old... Oh, my God. Dude, why are you why are you being a bitch, paper? As soon as the camera gets on, you start acting all weird and shit. Like a goddamn... Who's a what's a... Cincinnati Bengals, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You got the young buck. First, the old buck. Joe Burrow versus Tom Brady. Hmm. Um, Tom Brady looks like a shell of himself, and I'll tell you why. It seems like he's mentally out of it. After the game against the Niners last week, a Niner player who intercepted him came up, asked him to sign the ball that he picked Tom Brady off. Now, if, that, that, if that's not the most condescending shit I've ever heard in my life, I don't know what is. But... If Tom Brady was mentally in that, you know what he would have done? He would have smiled at him, grabbed the ball, signed it, and threw it in the fucking crowd, put the middle finger up, and would have said, see you in the fucking playoffs, you shit stain. He didn't say that at all. In fact, he signed the ball, smiled at him, and said, good game. This guy's mind's elsewhere. We all know it, man. We all know it. And we all know why. I, t- I talked about it last, th- I mean, last, th- this this Tuesday in my podcast, we all know why. And that's okay. I mean, it's fucking, there's a lot more to life than football. But, yeah, I, I can't see the Cincinnati Bengals not winning. They just beat the Browns, who they've never beat, or Joe Burrow's never beat. And the Bucks just came off of uh, a loss to the Niners. A, not even a loss, a fucking a blowout against the Niners. Cincinnati's rolling. They, they beat the Chiefs, too. So, yeah, Cincinnati's rolling. Um, but the thing is, with the Bengals, we know they can beat any team any given Sunday. That's fine. We understand that. But we also need to put into account they could lose to any team any given Sunday. I mean, this isn't the most consistent team in the league. Now, will that happen? I don't know. They tend to turn it on towards the end of the season. So it looks like they're on that run, the same kind of run they made last year to go to the Super Bowl. I'm going to roll with Cincy. I just, it's hard to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers really do anything right this year. You know what I mean? It, it's just not there this year. That's another piece of paper. Get it out. We got some more fun stats coming up right here. Now, we're going to just get this one out of the way because this is the fucking absolute worst game ever. We got the best team in the league. Well, not the best team. We got one of the best teams in the league versus the worst team in the league, the Houston Texans, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to take like two seconds to say that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to fucking roll with this one, like probably by 80. If I had to put a guess on it, 80. That's all I'm going to say about that one. I mean, what a shit show of a game absolute disgrace to the NFL that they would allow that kind of travesty on. That shit better not even be on TV. I don't care if there is no games on TV. Do not put that shit on TV at all. Dallas Cowboys, Jacksonville Jaguars are next one. Got some interesting stuff to talk about here. Jacksonville coming off that big win against the Tennessee Titans. Comeback win. And man, Trevor Lawrence, T-Law never looked so good after that game. Here's some stats. Well, let's just put it this way. Dallas is 10 and 3, Jacksonville's 5 and 8. Dallas is fighting, Jacksonville's fighting. We'll see how it goes. The Jags, they're number 15 in terms of points per game at 22.6. They're going against the Cowboys, who are number 3 in opponents' points per game at 17.6. Advantage Cowboys there. It's going to be a struggle for the Jags. Also, Jags, 15 in terms of opponents' points per game at 22.6. So the Jags average. They put up the same amount of points on average as they get up, as they give up, 22.6. So on average, they tie every game. Um, but yeah, Jags, they give up 22.6 points per game. They're going against the number three best scoring team in the league with the Dallas Cowboys getting 27.7 points per game. Here's going to be the equilibrium. Here's going to be the, the, the stat that's really going to matter is can the Cowboys 
get to Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, the fifth least sacked quarterback in the league in terms of QB sacked percentage. He only gets sacked 4.74% of times. But the Cowboys, they get to the quarterback 10% of the time. So it's going to be what's going to happen. I'm sure there's going to be at least two sacks. But if the Cowboys can get to the quarterback, this is going to be easy. And the Jacksonville Jaguars will be easy to take care of. On the other hand, if the Jags can stay out of pressure and you know really frustrate this Cowboys defense, keep them on the field a lot longer than they used to be, they, they have a chance, man. This team has shown they can score. Not very consistently, but when they're on, they're on. And we're, we're going to see what's going to happen. And they're not playing in Dallas, so we'll see. And there's a funny stat. The Jacksonville Jaguars haven't beat Dallas at home when the Jacksonville Jaguars are at home since 2006. The Billboard Top 100 song, Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. Box Office, number one movie. Jackass number two. That's how long it's been, guys, since Jacksonville has beat Cowboys, has beat the Cowboys in their home stadium. In Jacksonville's home stadium. So, I mean, fuck, they're trying to break the street. I mean, Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake, that's a long time ago, man. That's a long time ago. Good era, long time ago, though. I'm going to end up rolling with the Dallas Cowboys. They're just more consistent, right? And if you look at the spread, there's a minus four spread for the Cowboys. Let's look at the trends. They're 8-5 and five overall, 6-4 and four over their last 10, 3-2 and two on the road. And you look at the Jaguars, 5-8 and eight overall, 3-7 and seven in their last 10, 3-2 and two at home. But I think Dallas Cowboys can make this a little bit more of a blowout in terms of just outlasting them. They're just a better team, more, more consistent, more well-rounded team. I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys on this one. And I think that that record of, of Jacksonville not being able to beat Dallas is in Jacksonville Stadium since 2006. I think that'll stay 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 rolling. I mean, these teams only play each other four t- every four years, so maybe in 2026, I'll be coming back saying that same exact stat. Maybe I'll even play the song for you guys. We'll see, though. We're rolling with Dallas. Next game, Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Carolina Panthers. I don't expect anybody to be watching this game unless you're a Steeler or a Panther fan. Now, both these teams can still make the playoffs, and the funny thing is the Panthers have a better chance to make the playoffs because their division's so trash. It's so trash. I think if they win out, they'll they'll make it. Um, some news for the Steelers. Kenny Pickett went from questionable to doubtful. It's either going to be Mitch or Mason. I personally, after seeing Mitch throw the amount of interceptions, I think he has more, way more talent than Mason Rudolph. And if he just wasn't such a fucking bonehead, then I I would go with Mitch Trubisky. But we've seen enough of him. Just give Mason a shot. Mason's on his last year of his contract. He's probably not going to be back with the team. Give him a chance to make a resume for a team to sign him. And it's not like... It's like Mitch is here if he's doing well, and then Mason's here. But let's just see what Mason can do. Deontay Johnson's came out and said he wants Mason to start, so fuck it. Your number one receiver wants him to start? Play him. I mean, what do you have to lose? Mitch Trubisky? Oh, my God. Who gives a fuck about that guy? He'll go sign with someone else. I mean, let's just give Mason the chance. Let's roll with him, see what we got. The only thing I hate about Mason, he's not mobile. I like Kenny and I like Mitch because they can get out of the pocket and not just stand there and just take hits. And we don't have the best O-line, so that, that's something that's very useful in our offense is to be able to escape the pocket and not get sacked. On the other hand, you got Sam Darnold, who's 2-0 and since coming back. So the Panthers are really going to find out, is Sam Darnold our guy or are we going to draft someone in the first round? I think if, if Sam Darnold goes undefeated for the rest of his games, you got to take a look at keeping him as your starting quarterback. But we'll see. Um, yeah, both these teams have to win to keep their um, uh, their stats alive. Or not their stats, their playoff hopes alive. And we got another, another stat I want to share with you guys. And it goes like this. The Steelers haven't lost to Carolina. The Panthers haven't beat the Steelers. Since 1996, in December, the Billboard Top 100 song, I Believe I Can Fly by R. Kelly. Man, what a time. Space Jam, shout out. Number one box office hit, 101 Dalmatians. That's how long it's been since the Carolina Panthers have beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to hear to tell you, here we go, Pittsburgh. Let's keep that tradition alive. Let's roll. Let's make as every bit of push as we can towards the playoffs and towards the postseason and yeah, 
I'm gonna roll with. Oh man, I, I'm gonna roll with Pittsburgh because I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with Pittsburgh. But the Carolina Panthers could definitely beat us. But I'm gonna roll with Pittsburgh. Yeah, we're gonna roll with Pittsburgh for sure. God, man, what is what a season? I'm already looking forward to next season. Already looking forward to next season. It's been a tough year for us Steeler fans. But this is why this is why it's so nice because we have six Super Bowls. So it's like everyone else is playing catch up behind us. Everyone else is behind us, <laughs> trying to catch up to us and the Patriots, I guess. But you know what I mean. It's like it's is it really that bad? You know, is it really that bad? It ain't so bad. Next game: Detroit Lions, New York Jets. This is the most even matchup of the century. Let me tell you why. All time. The Detroit Lions versus the New York Jets. The Jets have won seven times. The Lions have won seven times. It's seven and seven, baby. This game's going to be the deciding factor of who's going to take the lead in the race. On one hand, here's why it gets interesting. The Jets, number six in terms of opponents, points per game with just 18.7. The Lions, fifth in the league in points per game, averaging 26.8. So we're going to give the advantage to the Lions in that one. The Jets, number three in opponents' yards per game at 301.2. The Lions, number four in the league in yards per game at 376.4. Advantage Jets, one to one. The Jets, number three in rushing TDs per game with 1.5. The Lions, 16 in opponents' rushing TDs per game, averaging one per game. Advantage Jets, Jets two. Lions won. The Jets, number seven in passing yards per game with 248.8, going up against the number fourth team in opponents passing yards per game at 189.4. Advantage, Lions. Two to two. And the stat to take over who I'm going to pick, you got the Jets, who are number four in QB sack percentage with 4.09% going up against... The fourth best team in opponents' QB sack percentage with 8.37%. That's an even tie. That's a two-two tie. Just like their all-time record of seven and seven. Who the fuck's gonna win? The Detroit Lions. Let's take a look at their season. Started off absolutely trash. I think they went on a five-game losing streak. Brought it back up. They're on about a four-game winning streak right now. Hot, hot as ever. Right, rolling right now. You look at the New York Jets. Started off really, really good. Took a couple falls recently, but they played some really tough teams. Both these teams can make the playoffs. Both these teams need a win. God, who am I going to go against? You know, I really didn't even think about this one. I thought it would come to me as I started talking about all these stats, but no, it's not at all. Um, Jesus. I mean, the Jets' defense is pretty nasty. Mike White's been getting off recently, so if he can put a couple of those balls in the end zone... It could be tough, but it's weird to think that Detroit has a really good, um, really good passing defense. Guys, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the streak with the Lions. I'm gonna go with the New York Jets here. I think they're. I like Robert Sala. I'm gonna go with the New York Football Jets here. They just played a lot tougher, stiffer competition, I believe. Oh, not even that though. Not even that. But I'm just going to roll with the Jets, man. Something, something's telling me go with the Jets here. We're going to see the most even matchup of all time in the history of football. We're going to go with the Jets, man. Going to be going to be a good one for sure. I'm excited to tune into that game. We already talked about that. Fourth piece of paper. Get the fuck out of our face. Get the fuck out the face, dude. Jesus. Uh, all right. Next game. Atlanta Falcons versus the New Orleans Saints. Who's going to win this one? Nothing interesting at all about this one other than Desmond Ryder's coming in replacing Marcus Mariota at QB. If you don't know who Desmond Ryder is, rookie out of Cincinnati. He was a four-year starter there. Third round pick. He's 6'3", 207 pounds, runs a 4.52 40-yard dash. Here's what's got me thinking. Why the fuck didn't he start in the first place? Why didn't you just let him start in the... Why even have Mark Mariota start? Like, for what? Dude, this guy looks like a, a stud. Here's his senior year college stats. 3,334 yards passing, 30 TDs passing, just eight interceptions. He's got 355 rushing yards, and he got six rushing TDs his senior season. 
What was his QBR? Oh, I don't know. Fucking perfect. 158.7. And he's, and he's not starting. But it's going to be interesting. Desmond Ryder, they're letting him go. I, I'm interested in seeing what, what this guy does. It's going to be really, really fun to watch. <laughs> New Orleans Saints, man. Wow. I don't even know what to say to them. It's funny because they can still make the playoffs too. But New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons, we're going to roll Desmond Ryder, the Rook, coming in and busting up the New Orleans Saints. Here we go, Falcons. That's all I got to say about that game. Now, this next game, you guys might be thinking, oh, T-Bloom, this ain't really much. We already know what's going to happen here. And we probably do. But it's fun to speculate, isn't it? Isn't that what the whole point of this thing is? It's just speculation, the what-ifs and the who's-nots of the league. Come on, dude. Fucking work with me here. Sweet talk me now. There we go. Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Bears. Now, this just came down to one thing. What would be interesting? We got the Bears, who 3-10. They're not going to make the playoffs. First, the Philadelphia Eagles, who already clinched the playoffs. Guys, we have two generational potential talents. We know Jalen Hurts. He's coming into his own right now, but Justin Fields has been showing out too. He's been showing his athleticism, showing stints and sparks of what he could be long-term for the Chicago Bears. So this is... Justin Fields versus Jalen Hurts, round one. This could be a rivalry. This could be a game that we look forward to for years and years in the future. Justin Fields versus Jalen Hurts. Here's a stat. Philly has won every game against the Bears since 2011. Wow. November 2011. Um, yeah. What was that stat? Oh, man, I had that shit open. Let's do some billboards and some box offices. Oh, yeah. Number one billboard song in November of 2011. We found love in a hopeless place. Rihanna, trash, really bad. I fucking could not stand that song. Still can't. I still can't. Um, box office. Let's look at it. November 2011. Box office. Should be good. <laughs> the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 1. Another trash movie. So a really trash time. Philadelphia Eagles has won, yeah, every game since since 2011. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. Um, let's take a look at the over here. Got some interesting stats to go along with here. Phil the over sits at 48.5. Philadelphia Eagles, 9-4 and four overall. 8 and 2 in their last 10, 3 and 3 on the road. Fine. The Bears 9 and 4 overall. 8 and 2 in their last 10 and 4 and 2 at home. Smash the over here, folks. I don't care who you are. Take out the fucking mortgage. Tell your wife, "Hey, fuck yourself. Tell the kids, "Hey, daddy will be your favorite real soon. We're going to get to a one big one big gambling trip here. We're smashing the over on the Eagles and Bears and have yourself a good old family fun time. Who's going to win?" Drum roll, please. Charlie, I know you're listening. The Philadelphia Eagles will win this game. I mean, who else am I going to fucking take, man? I'm not going against the Eagles. How can I sit here and go against the Eagles? No. Eagles by a million. Next game. Jesus Christ. I got to blow my nose. I'm sorry. I've been trying to fight it, but I have to. God damn it, Jerry. Where's my fucking water? I'm sorry, folks. Don't worry, don't worry. What are we at? 33 minutes so far? That's fine, that's fine. We're doing good. Having a ball, having a blast. Deep Bloom Talk Show, week 15. That's crazy, man. Week 15. Can't believe you made it this far. All right, next game. Well, let's just get this shit staying out of the way. The Arizona Cardinals versus the Denver Broncos. Man, I mean, please don't tell me this is a night game. Please, for the fucking sake of the NFL gods, do not tell me this is a night game right now. I will be so livid. The Let's Ride Russell Wilsons versus the fucking Kyler. I don't give a fuck about you, Murray. Oh, man. It's just, that sucks about Kyler Murray's injury, ACL tear. We'll see what happens with him. Please don't tell me this is a night game. Please don't tell me this is a night game. Come on, baby. Oh, thank 
fuck. Not a night game, folks. Don't worry, this is not a primetime game. We dodged a bullet there. But what can I say about this game? I don't even know who's going to be playing for the Cardinals QB. I really don't care. It doesn't matter at all. Um, the fucking Broncos. I mean, this might be 3-2 to two by the end of the fucking game. Like, genuinely, this is going to be the sloppiest, bore, most boring game I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to roll with the Broncos. Because, yeah, I'm going to roll with the Broncos. I don't even fucking know why. A lot of really good games this week and a lot of really terrible ones that no one wants to tune into. Okay, here we go. Last one, and then we're going to have Charles the Eighth come in and take it away. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of things. Keep in mind, this interview was done, I believe it was Monday night? No, Tuesday night. Tuesday night after the podcast, so a couple things might not be up to date, but still, great conversation. It's his first time on air. He's going to give out his Twitter and stuff. Go Make sure you go ahead and follow him, and I'll do a whole other relay after this game. We got the New England Patriots versus the Las Vegas Raiders. New England sitting at 7-6 and six with the playoff hopes, and the Las Vegas Raiders really trying to, uh, I guess, save their playoff hopes. I guess really just trying to keep it together there in Vegas land. Here's a stat I bet you didn't know. The Raiders haven't beat the Patriots since 2002. The number one song in the billboards... Lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. Lose yourself by Eminem himself. Number one box office movie? Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Hell of a time. Hell of a time. Might be the best. Hear me out here. 2002 might be the best year in human history. You're going to tell me different? You're going to tell You're going to sit here and tell me a different a different year was better. Give me a break. If you have one, leave it in the comments. I don't care. I'm willing to debate. I'll have you on the show. Let's go. Anyway, uh, the fucking the Raiders are two in giveaways, and the Pats are five in takeaways. So, yeah, the Raiders turn the ball over. The Pats take the ball. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Patriots on this one. Josh McDaniels. Coming against his uh, his former team, he'll probably be back on that that uh, that staff here any time now. So um, yeah, we're going with the Patriots. That's gonna do it for my picks this week. Like I said, Charles the Eighth, welcome him on to the talk show, everyone. Give your graces, say hello. Without further ado, I bring you Sir Charles the Eighth. Hey there, how's it going? How's it going? It's going good, man. Good to talk to you. Excited yeah, to be here. Absolutely, man. Welcome to the T-Bloom Talk Show. Excited to have you on. You're my fourth official guest. You're honestly Ooh. the only guest that I actually know. Like, within, okay. You know, in person. So Yeah, I get that. Is, That's cool. Yeah, okay. This is, this is cool. Good to have you on. Obviously, you're a San Francisco 49er fan. That's, yeah, a little Let's bit see. of an understatement for sure. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and let T Bloom Nation know who you are, what do you do, where do you live, and you know anything you want to mention. Hey man, uh, my name's Charles. Uh, I used to live in Tacoma, right there, uh, you know, by T Bloom there. But uh, now I live in Texas, so it's a little different, you know. Being a Niners fan, I do a lot of Cowboys fans. It's not much fun, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, working construction, working and uh, transitioning into software engineering. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's been a journey. I'm actually moving to Baltimore. In three months super excited to be a big ravens fan you know i know you're gonna love that uh, <sighs> lamar man so yeah Fuck yeah <laughs> oh my goodness um uh, so it, so like the dynamic of texas in terms of like fanship and shit like that is it really just dallas cowboys fans or do you uh, see some texans fans you see there? a little you'll see like a texan sticker but it's faded you know like someone put it on when jj watt was there and they just haven't peeled it off yet <laughs> but that, that's about it yeah besides yeah. that is cowboys 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 just straight cowboys oh heavy oh, man, heavy nice. cowboys tattoos you know i've seen quite a few just right there on the arm you know they're they're proud down here yeah no that's that makes sense it is it texans the only other texas football team yeah in, in the nfl yeah i think so there's nothing going on in san antonio right no. yeah no no there's nothing like that no. yeah so i guess it's just houston and fucking dallas <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basketball is probably because they have what three three fucking teams in either. Oh yeah, yeah. Spurs, big 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 mm -hmm. Spurs. 
lots of spurs at least where i'm close to san antonio you know but yeah okay. lots of spurs down here for okay. sure so with that being said what what is your favorite sport like what what do you uh, most get excited about you know basketball and football always right there i think like the last few years football's kind of overtaken basketball just a little bit you know i yeah. kind of just I don't know. After the pandemic championship, I just kind of, I don't know. I stopped watching a little bit, but I'm a big Laker fan. Uh, loved the Warriors until everyone else did. Um, I called it when they lost to the Spurs that year. I was like, this is the team and they're coming, but look at them now. But yeah, football for sure. Uh, my family's diehard 49ers. We've got a lot of them that live in the area. So I yep. mean, it is uh, born and bred for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. you can tell by the fucking sign right behind you. Oh, I got, I got a helmet. I just, you know, there's no room for it. But oh yeah, so it, it's a, it's a, it's a family, family kind of situation. You know, you were born and raised that way. It wasn't just you. You were, you kind of just picked a team. It was just. No, oh yeah, there's pictures of me as a baby age. in a Jerry Rice jersey. I actually have the jersey. I had my daughter wear it a few times this year. You know, uh -huh. so yeah. Oh hell yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. absolutely. Pushing absolutely. it on her now too. Got to keep that tra tradition oh, yeah. going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So I know you had some stuff that you wanted to talk about. You Snapchat me a little, you know, a little, oh, yeah. little you know, I, I got, I got some things. I, some I have things a couple here. things, but I'm interested in what do you kind of want to start off talking about? And well, I know, you know, we were talking about, you posted something, you know, what are, what are the Niners going to do at this point? You know, and I got some opinions on this for sure. Okay. Uh, first okay. of all, I think Trey Lance has played his last snap in a Niners uniform. I don't think that's a question. Really? I think, at this point, Jimmy G's the guy, or we'll see what Brock Purdy can do. But I think the way Jimmy played this year, you don't have a choice. This team is too good to waste the talent and the time of these guys with a quarterback who's too iffy and just isn't going to consistently perform. I mean, Jimmy G, people don't talk. He doesn't have the stats. You know, people hate on him. 70% winning percentage as a starting quarterback. I'll take that any week, you know, mm -hmm. uh, any day. So, yeah, you guys have the defense. You really don't need a guy. I know what they say Trey Lance's ceiling is like this guy who can go out and just be like almost like a Cam Newton type of individual player. Definitely, for sure. It's never, you guys don't need that. You no, don't need that. Thank you. That is exactly, I feel the same like way. You, you guys have, you guys have the, the team around him to be able to, you know, be successful. And obviously, you guys went to the Super Bowl and. We're literally eight minutes away from winning the Super Bowl, and then Patty was a tough one. Yeah, yeah for tough. sure, for sure. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. And then Brock Purdy, he's coming in. How have you? How do you give your assessment on him? That how yeah. has he done? So you far? know, I like the excitement. He looks like a Kyle Shanahan quarterback. You know, the system. You know, we've seen it before. Bethard, Nick Mullins. You know, guys that have come in and they're not great, but they win games. Mm -hmm. But I think Purdy looks better than either of them. And, you know, being a rookie, being so young, that contract, man, if he's even a startable quarterback and you can get away with paying him, what do I got? We got four-year contract, $3.7 million. You're paying him less than a million a year the next three years. Yeah. All that money going towards the defense, the talent, McCaffrey, it's, it's fine because you don't got to spend a quarterback. So I think that's a possibility you got to explore. Yeah, yeah. Do, I, and speaking of your uh, talent that you guys have, your rookie safety, I don't know his name. You know what I'm talking about. Paul oh, my Mahalo gosh. Paul, yes, that's – oh, he's – oh, man, what's his name? Oh, that's going to bug me. Oh. I, I don't – I can – I wouldn't be able to say his name. Do you, it's – oh, no, I'm going to say it wrong. I don't even want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect the man. Sure. He's too good. He's too good of a football player. Yeah, he's, that he's guy is – pronouncing him out here. Absolutely a, a beast. I actually just watched something on Twitter. It was him giving an interview with – um. Oh, uh, who was it with? I don't remember. It was some former NFL player. Pretty much he was just saying like uh, how he ended up getting Troy Polamalu's number and then how yeah. he started clicking and how he was just like, I just listened to everything you said. I took my social media down. I did all that. And then, I mean, he's just, he's just dominating right now, man. That is a generational talent, it seems like, on the man. defensive side of the ball. What's crazy is I just found that out a few weeks ago. They were talking about it during one of the games. You know, I had no idea. You know, rookie, he's been really good. But man, Troy Paul, it just it makes sense. You know, they'd always heard the comparisons. I mean, yeah. you're gonna get him. I mean, the with fucking the hair. hair. Yeah. I was gonna say the hair right there. You're gonna get him. It just is. You know, came from USC, I believe. Uh -huh. you know, same kind of thing. But man, he looks incredible. And Dar, yeah. you know, we've had some injuries this year to our defense too. We have lost some guys. But man, Shavarius Ward has been huge for us. I can't believe how well he's played. But man, losing Verrett, never even got to play a snap. I think what Jimmy Ward's been out, 
I mean, it, it's been tough every yeah. year we go through this. But. And you guys have still managed to keep like you guys might be the best defense in the league. With argue, you can argue the Bills, or you can argue not you know, without Von Miller. With Von Miller out for the year, yeah, that is. A tough I worry blow. about them. I don't that know. Is a tough blow. What, uh-huh. what else? What other kind of stuff? I'm interested. Give me some. Give me some questions, right, man. So, give me some so shit. man, obviously, you know, Kyler Murray injury that was huge. You see mm-hmm. that. Cannot I, believe Torres ACL on that. I thought you know rolled his ankle, something weird. Turf monster, dude. Man, turf. Like the turf monster gets him again. It's just ah, it's been a tough year for that. That is, and I yeah. think where's this put Kingsbury? Is he going to keep his job? Dude, I don't know I, if you can. I don't know if you can justify keeping him. The way he's been, like, the way Kyler Murray has been acting towards Kingsbury, yelling at him on the sideline, and you know, blatant. obviously, I can't hear anything they're saying. Mm. I mean, I can just you know speculate. But as a head coach, you cannot have that. Like you, you can't have that as an imagery. Like it, it, you can't. It's a you bad can't. Look. It is a terrible look. Bad You're optics. getting yelled at by your quarterback. I've heard. I don't. I don't know. He just seems like a very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he, he doesn't seem like a head coach. Doesn't seem like he has that voice to be a head. coach. Exactly. No, tell, he doesn't. College is a different animal. You're talking mm-hmm. to kids. You know, you are. They're going to listen to you anyways. You know, you're yeah. the you're the adult in the room. You're talking to grown ass men in the NFL, mm-hmm. you know, people that have proven themselves and, you know, don't really need to listen to you. I mean, they do, but you got to earn it. You're not just going to get it off the bat. Yeah. And ah, his deep, I don't know. They just have not been able to put it together. Like last year, just that collapse. He just, last see, la- that's what I'm saying. Like it would yeah. be one thing if he was winning games and having this mm-hmm. good record and stuff like that. But no, it was his first year. Wasn't very good. And then no. last year it looked like they may have had something going. And then, like you said, collapsed at the end absolutely it was terrible i mean yeah. they were the first seed for mm-hmm. most of the season and then just off a cliff yeah and then mm-hmm. didn't pick anything back up this year not at all no they've yeah. been terrible and i mean murray looks like he's regressed you give him all that money mm-hmm. you know and i know he didn't have hopkins for a while but marquise brown was damn good you can't count that Dude, out marquise brown and we're gonna get we're, oh, i want to ask you oh. some questions about fantasy and stuff right now marquise oh, oh brown was a, yeah. was a uh dude he was, yeah he, looked, he was it elite. perfect it looked like uh-huh. a perfect match for them. It did. You know, I I was I didn't even know when Hopkins came back. Obviously, he got the target share, but I I mean, with Marquise Brown out, but man, what's it look like with them both healthy? Because ah, uh, that's yeah, you're not going to see it this year now. It, not, that's a Madden know? team right there. Like if yeah. you're playing Madden, dude, I want yeah. that team. Oh yeah, Give uh-huh. me that for team. sure. You can run around with a little rug rat and mm-hmm. just bomb it down the field for sure. <laughs> run around with a little rug rat, Murray. <laughs> He's floated up to Marquise Brown. Exactly. One of them is going to be down there. Over and over, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, James Conner finally looks good after everything falls apart. It's yeah. just they've had a lot of injuries. I'll mm-hmm. cut them some slack there. You know, the suspension was was that merited, whatever. That was mm-hmm. an interesting situation. So what are you talking about? But, Hopkins? Yeah. I mean, the I know they I don't know. He blatantly denied it. I don't he doesn't seem like that guy to me. I know what the Niners quarterback, but I don't cornerback said about him, called him fucking steroid boy, but he just, I don't well, know. It's like, how can you not, like, what did he have, like a picogram? Or is this like a John That's Jones what I'm situation? saying. Exactly. Like, yeah, it was something. We, yeah, I don't, I don't know. He just, the way it came out, whatever. I know the NFL has their weird little things anyways, where they've had people be like, hey, this is, you know, this is this substance, but I didn't know. I mean, I don't know. The way it came out, he's never come off as this guy who needed steroids. You know, I mean, it just, I didn't seem like, even if he did, I don't think he was trying to get an edge or anything like that. It was, but I yeah. don't Guy, I have guy weird opinions on that anyways. You know what steroids are for? For help healing injuries. Let these professional athletes use them in the right situation. I feel that way anyways. Ooh, bold that's take. A, that's bold a bold take. take right there. I, I mean, it has to be monitored, obviously. But man, what are they made for? <laughs> They're made for healing those major injuries faster. And who can't use them? The people who need that most. Just, what, just, oof, but. what if there was a league where everything was on the table? Any PED you wanted. Any kind of steroid, any kind of drug you wanted, it was See, legal. no. You're going to have Dude, like, defensive <laughs> players on math, and this bad things are going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you think about it. Back in the day, Raiders players, and I'm sure a bunch more in the 70s, dude. Cowboys players in the 90s. Yeah, on the sideline. Michael Irvin was known for just Broken guards. Time, yeah, right? I exactly. mean, yeah. It, it's a different – It's a t- 
It's, a different. it's not hey, so the, far fetched. Seahawks, it's not so far fetched. Look at the Adderall Seahawks, the Legion of Adderall. I mean, mm-hmm. look how good they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's not it's not as far fetched as people think. People think it's like just this clean league that we, we play exactly. in, in. And I'm not saying let them use them all the time. But if you got right. a guy who's going to be out six weeks, you give him steroids, he can be back in four, maybe five. Get mm-hmm. your players back on the field, you know, under monitored control, obviously. But, you know, just That's the thing take. I've always felt. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that I is- actually. When I was about 10 years old, back when Drew Brees tore his rotator cuff, I was a yeah. huge Drew Brees fan. I wrote an article, just because I was a nerd like that, about how you should be allowed to use – I wonder if I could find it. My mom might have it. You should be you able to use that, that stuff. <laughs> I was find like that. 10 or, dude, that was – because that was pre-Saints. So that would be like 07, 08, dude. I was like 10, 11 years old. <laughs> dude, 07, 08, I used to write 08, shit yeah. like that, yeah, for fun. Yeah. So sports nerd stuff. Were, were you have you so you've always been just deeply invested in in football and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Just, or? You know, like it's just no stats. I mean, Madden, two K, all that stuff. You know, just mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a big part of my life. My dad used to force me when I was real little to watch the games with him. I oh, used yeah. to hate it, but now you know, it's, you know it just paid who off. You are it now. worked. It's who I am. Yeah, yeah, Sundays I'm not doing anything. I'm on the couch. I'm watching football. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I get a job. Every time I get a job, I tell them, nope, can't work Sundays. And it happens mm-hmm. to work out because they're like, oh, you know, church, whatever. No, let's go to church. Exactly. Yeah, religious. Hot I'm like, yep, I am going to church. You are. <laughs> this You're is church. my church. This is my mm-hmm. way of, you know, praising, praising the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And even Thursdays, especially the Thursday games, this Thursday, especially. Dude, oh. Why do Thursday games <sighs> suck so bad? Why do they? I don't know, but I think this is going to be a good one. What's the next one? Dude, Niners Seahawks. Niners win. They oh. get the division locked up this Thursday. That's Thursday? Yeah. Well, I guess oh, it's going to happen by the time this airs, huh? Shit. It but will. you uh, got to yeah. give your prediction then. Or- oh, it's, I, I don't think it's a question. I don't care who we put out at quarterback. It could be Josh yeah. Johnson. I think we're going to beat him. <laughs> Josh Johnson. No offense. Hey, he's like, what, our fourth, fifth string? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's great about that? Marshawn Lynch can be there rooting for his cousin, I'm sure. So, you know, it'll be a late game. Josh Johnson, that's the dude whose cousin's with a – he's the quarterback. That's Marshawn he's, Lynch's cousin? He's related to Marshawn Lynch, yes. The quarterback who's bounced around everywhere. He's related what? to Marshawn Lynch, yes. That's crazy. Yes. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he has to be then. Mm-hmm. Absolutely has to be. be um, let, let, let me just ask you this. I want to get in this before I forget because – Zoom, man, I only have 45 minutes. I have to upgrade to be able to do as long as I do. Got you. Yeah. I don't even know what we're at right now, but it'll tell me when 10 minutes is coming up. But I wanted to Got ask you. you this because you and I were in the same fantasy league. You're yes. my commish. Yep. I just want to say, hey, it's been a tough – it's been tough being a commission. I want to ask you like – This was a tough year. This <laughs> was a tough lying. year. This there was a, a moment handle, where it was man. like, dude – there was going off a couple yeah. times, man. So, yeah. what was like? You want to break that down? What was the scenario like? Let's what are the, let T Bloom Nation know what the <sighs> scenario is because this is interesting. It's an interesting one. This was a weird one. So, okay, so we have the vote. We had the vote. You know, you vote in the app was how we set. And you know, we got twelve team league, six votes to veto. Pretty standard, right? You know, half the team. I feel like that's fair. But um, we had a situation where a guy. Accepted a trade that he then claimed he didn't mean to. So he reaches out in the group chat, as you saw, and requested some vetoes. And, you know, 10 minutes later, what happens? Boom, trades vetoed. Uh-huh. And that's collusion. You know, if, I don't, if you ask me, that's definition. collusion. So you, what <laughs> I actually had to find out who those six votes were. I talked to everybody and the no one voted because he asked. And the deciding votes have literally never met that person, JC, who, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Been in collusion. Anyways, in hate right to drag now. his name. Oh, of course he is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I couldn't, I couldn't force it to go through because the person who made the deciding vote was like, "Dude, I've never met him. I don't know him. Why the fuck would I listen to him?" And I was like, "That's a fair point. You know, I can't argue with that. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why would I help him? I'm like, fair. He said, "Fuck that. That's a shitty trade." Well, here, right. here is my, here is I, I was one of those people who voted against mm-hmm. it, and here is my, my perspective was. I had just recently tried. It was for Marquise Brown. I remember that. I had just he recently made tried the, you know, to get funny, him. He should have made the trade in hindsight. Because, but anyways, yeah, it, <laughs> that's a whole. That, that's what's funny about this. That's what's got a love fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I made the veto against it specifically because I had just reached out to JC about getting Marquise Brown, and I felt I gave him a way better deal than what he accepted. So in my mind, I'm like, no, you know what? fuck that shit. You know, it's kind of petty. It's very petty. Very petty of me. But you're doing it for your own reasons, your own personal gains. Yeah, so totally that gives reasonable. me the question of like, is it like, 
where does the like the moral like the not the moral standards but like what what is does it do you have to have a solid reason to veto a trade like you know, you know what I, mean? I think you do i've always hated the petty vetoes you know okay. it's just like all right i mean you know i mean i get it if it's like hey i'm trying to make a move for this guy like in your situation but at you know we have one guy in our league who literally ve votes to veto every trade just because so you know yeah, that yeah. Kind of stuff, that kind of stuff. yeah yeah just to be a dick <laughs> yeah just to be a dick and uh you know that kind of stuff gets frustrated so i actually ended up changing the system so that we still had the vote but it was through me so you had to actually send a message to me saying i want to veto this and you know mm -hmm. give me a little reason why and that's all i mean it's not like i'm gonna say if it's a good reason but you have to at least reach out and you know uh we got a lot less vetoes after that which is weird because i guess people weren't just willy-nilly yeah because it's the not button. just a button you gotta push uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's like not you just gotta... a mindless little you gotta sit there you know so yeah. and i feel like you know if you're gonna veto two people made an agreement they uh, you know put some time into it mm -hmm. and if you're just gonna willy-nilly you know if you're gonna veto it have a reason put a little time in yourself you know don't just be ruining people's yeah. season like hell yeah, i lost sure, McCaffrey. Sure. i was gonna make a trade for mccaffrey man i had that mccaffrey trade got vetoed you know i was bummed but <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do it's, yeah it happens fantasy man it's such an interesting question because like there's and especially when you get money involved tempers will flare uh -huh. money will bring out oh, the worst in everyone dude, there so. was some <laughs> there was yeah i can you a lot of it was even out of the group chat that I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was getting personal messages trying to mediate. Oh, I bet for this, sure. Dude, for sure. And first of all, it's a game. I don't care. <laughs> we aren't betting a thousand dollars on this. You know, we got a little money up, <laughs> sure, but this is not. I need this serious. for rent, okay, all, man. Like, I need this just, for rent. <laughs> like when I'm at work, like I don't need <laughs> yeah. this. My phone going off. Dude, I looked down to my phone. I didn't see this happen until it was already vetoed. I have like 50 messages <laughs> and it's through. all about fantasy. <laughs> so I'm standing on the ladder and I was just like, oh, this, this, so I turn around you know, back and I just, I take my time. Oh yeah. I'm like 10 feet in the air, putting up a security camera, whatever. But uh, yeah, so it was a lot this year. Uh, oh, yeah. It should be interesting next year with the keeper rule. I'm well, that's what I was going to find ask. out. Are we running it back next year? Oh, we're running it back. Everyone okay, so says it's a keeper back. league. It's, it's a, a keeper, keeper two league. keepers. So we're doing keepers. The keepers, whoever you keep is addressed. So like, say you keep, if I keep Jonathan Taylor, I took him first overall, then I don't have a first round pick next year. But if I keep Barkley, I don't have my third round pick because that's the round I drafted him in. So all when we do the draft next year, I'll go through and assign those players we decided to keep for the corresponding draft slot. And then we just draft the other rounds. So we get two players to keep, and then we redraft the rest of our rounds and run it back. So Okay, but can we, choose, can we choose not to keep those players? You can, yeah. If you don't want to keep anybody, you don't have to. But you can keep get up to draft. two players. Yep, so if you want to keep nobody and have every draft pick. But then, you know, with that first-round pick, are you going to get top-tier talent? Because mm -hmm. 10 people kept two players and now the top 20 players are off the board, you know? Oh, so that's what, yeah, that's yeah. what makes it confusing. So it's going to be interesting. I've never done this before. I'm it is going to be interesting. I've never done this, this way of fantasy either. Yeah. I've honestly, I mean, not going to lie. I thought, oh, keep it it's stupid. Why wouldn't I just, you know, let's fucking run it back normal, but I'm fucking willing to do it. I mean, I'm invested now. I have no choice. All right. I mean, yeah. so my reasoning behind it was we've had turnover every season. We've been in this league. I don't know, three years now, whatever. There's always mm -hmm. some people leaving some people, even this season, we, you know, has some, fuckers not wanting to pay and uh, we had to give them the boot but you know it happened i'm trying to just keep some continuity in the league you know mm -hmm. keep people keep it like an actual fucking league yeah exactly yeah. you know so yeah yeah that's uh that's how i'm feeling Hell hopefully yeah. next year will go a little better it was a weird year this year i don't know just real top heavy learning a lot learning of yeah for sure 12 team is different it's a little harder mm -hmm. absolutely um so you have any more? I know you had a whole list of stuff. Like, like, well, give me, oh, some, yeah. give me something good, man. So, who do you got winning MVP? Because I don't oh, think it's much of a race at this point. I think Jalen Hurts is running. It's away with same. It. I was gonna say everyone. I saying. And I hate to say it because mm -hmm. I, I am not a believer in Philadelphia. Fucking my look good this my year. My other man. friend Charlie's oh. gonna hate me because he's a Philadelphia yeah. Eagle fan. But I am not. If you look at their schedule, technically they don't have the e they have a really easy. No, oh schedule. yeah, yeah. Really I mean they got the schedule. Cowboys, but yeah. besides that, yeah. And then you lose to the Commanders, but at the same time, these guys are not just beating teams; they're blowing people out. Like oh yeah, like AJ Brown has been a revelation for that offense. Holy yes. cow! Yeah, just absolutely next level. And you pair him with Devontae Smith, mm -hmm. it's 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 not even scaring me, honestly. I, I and. I'm a Steeler fan, so there's oh, yeah. the whole dynamic of I have six, 
I don't want the Niners getting six. You know what I mean? So I understand if there's a team that. to beat the Niners, it's going to be Philly. But yeah, I think Jalen Hurts has to be running away with it right now. Oh, I don't think it's. I think the leap he's taken throwing the ball this year is just incredible. You know, last year he was, you know, a lot more with his legs. He, when he would try to pass it, he should break down. But this year, oh my God, he's had games where he stands in the pocket and wins. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's unreal. I mean, I, who would have thought he'd be better than Tua in the, plo, in the pros? That's what's beautiful about yeah. it, dude. Uh-huh. Like, he's beating out the guy who took his spot in Bama and Payback. By far beating him out. And then there's Mac Jones just sitting there like, eh, you know. Fucking, fucking Mac Jones. Bum. That guy's the biggest god. flopper. Like, oh my god, he I bring know. flopping to the NFL. Dude, like, him and Daniel Jones, I hope they're best friends. Cause like I could just see them is Daniel Jones hanging the same out. Thing? Well, they're just goofy. Both of them. You've seen Daniel Jones. Run. <laughs> no, Daniel you know Jones fell on his goofy. face, bro. This dude had a touchdown. Like, I'll never forget that. That is the one of the funniest NFL plays. Uh, touchdown, boom. Just tripped on his own feet, fell on his face. Like, you can't do that. You just yeah. what's ridiculous is how fast he is. Like, oh my god, I know. I mean, like, this gazelle, might be a little dude, controversial, legs, but just... a white dude running that fast. Come <laughs> on, happen. man. Right, That's right? not it. That doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. Unless you're Christian McCaffrey. But. Yeah, unless you're CMC or not a, mm-hmm. a quarterback, you know, unless yeah. what is it? who's the fastest white quarterback ever? <sighs> well, God. Can he pick uh, it? I nope, was going to say Steve Young. Steve Young was Steve a scrambler. Young had some wheels was, on him. Yeah, but Daniel wheels. Jones, I mean, he, he might Josh be Josh Allen, fast. man. Josh, Josh Allen can Josh, run. Yeah. He can run. See, that's going to be my second one. It's, oh, it was Josh Allen, but he's kind of – so I'm worried down. about the Bills. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm worried. It's gonna be uh, tough. It's, it's gonna. But man, playoffs. We're getting down. We're getting Dude, down we to are. the nitty gritty. You know, w- the AFC just, uh, especially. The the what? The AFC especially. It's it's oh, there's dude, some it's there's a lot of variables in there for sure. Who do you think? Let's say, assuming that the Niners just don't go to the Super Bowl and win it, and I know that's a tough thing for me to ask you because obviously, in your mind, you're like, you know what, we're fucking doing it, Brock Purdy, Man. we're doing it. I hope. I do hope. you think it goes the Super Bowl goes to the AFC or the NFC, or who has the better chance? Which conference? Mm, I I don't think you can count out Mahomes. He's just I don't I don't care what their record is. I don't care how well they're playing at the time. You put him in any game, and he can go in it. Especially in the playoffs, he just he knows what he's doing. But I would say AFC because if it's the NFC, it's either the Eagles or the Niners. I don't see anyone else. Uh huh. You know, Vikings are a fraud. I mean, absolute fraud. The Vikings, they, they mean they aren't it. They're no. a bunch of stains. Yeah, you're gonna put Cousins are. in the playoffs. L. Give I mean, him one prime just, time that game. Fast. And he's That's done. what I'm saying. It's over. <laughs> so you know, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Bengals. The Bengals? Dude, there's been talk about, like, ah. and I just had on some guy, uh, Jordan Hines. Shout out Jordan Hines. I bring him on, and he, he's a Bengals guy. And he's talked about, you know, they did just beat the Chiefs, which is like, you know, that's a that huge big. win. That was a big um, win. But ever since I had him on, I've been seeing a bunch of stuff about, you know, the Bengals are not far away. They're not as far away from the Bills and the Chiefs as people think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I see it yet, and it's hard for me to say it because I'm an AFC North guy, and like the Bengals have always just been, you know, like I a it's thorn. Hard. It's yeah. a thorn mm-hmm. in my side, especially and I, for the Steelers. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to say that they are, but at the end of the day, they have all the talent in the world, and we've seen what they did last year when they made this big run to the to the Super Bowl. It, it's tough for the AFC, man. It, it's gonna it be, is. It's, it's gonna be interesting. And that's kind of the Bengals are starting to look just like last year. I mean, even with Nixon mm-hmm. out, they've been rolling and they're just, Turning you know, it on Higgins the the year. not playing, Boyd not playing, and they're still just going out there and like, they look good. Burrow, just when he's in that zone, uh-huh. he is top three quarterback, I think, when he's playing at his peak level. He's uh, he's right there. Dude yeah, can throw is. the ball. Yeah. I mean, and, he and not even just a system. Either. That's what the, exactly. It's not a system. A it's, mm-hmm, it's him. It's him going out there and just getting it done. Mm-hmm. And I respect it. And he's tough. He reminds me of Big Ben. Maybe a little, you know, a little more talented arm, but he is just a kind of big dude. But he just, I don't know, he's gritty. Like Josh mm-hmm. Allen is look this big, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. He's I don't know. He just doesn't have that it factor that Joe Burrow has. You don't you know? think so? Josh Allen. I don't see. I don't think he has that. I mean, he's good. Don't give me he's a great quarterback, but Joe Burrow has that just that un that something you can't attain that that's why it's that exactly that when you just walk out he's cool that joe montana factor like they talk about mm-hmm. where you're just calm under pressure 
you're fine. And you just go out there and do what you got to do. And you, you've seen that video when he was won the LSU natty and he's sitting there with that cigar. Like that looked mm-hmm. like a goddamn commercial. Like they like, that's what I took mean. Like 17 different takes. No, that was Josh Allen is Tony. jumping up and down. He's giddy like a little kid. You know, he's just not walk- like, yep, done. And just, you know, Joe Burrow, man, Joe cool. He's so cool. Someone to be reckoned with. Yeah. But yeah, but man, I, you know, honestly, my preseason pick was the Chargers. I hate to say because Dude. boy, was I wrong. Everyone was talking at Bills and I was like, the Chargers, all the talent. And you'd think because they wow. had Khalil Mac. Mm-hmm. How do you add Khalil Mac and, and JC Jackson to the same and, team and oh. then just, you're, what are you, they're seven and six now? Mm-hmm. Something like that, yeah. So, fighting, yeah. fighting every single game just to stay in the race. I mean, they're right there. That's what. I, what did I have down here? Who's left right now? We got, I think, the Pats and the Dolphins in the six and seven seed, but the Jets and Chargers are right there too. Only two of those four teams are making it, mm-hmm. and I just, I want to. I think the Dolphins will make it. I think they still have enough firepower, but oh man, they're starting. Tua is not looking great. Yeah, I see. He went 10 for 28. Did you watch oh, that? I didn't I, watch much of that. He was 4 for 18 at one point, I do believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, something along those lines. And I watched it. You know, I have Tyreek Hill. So I knew but, yeah, what was you going were watching on. It, I was yeah. watching. Yeah. But, oh, my God, he was awful. I mean, he couldn't complete a pass. It mm-hmm. was. So I don't think they're making a big run, but I think they'll make it in. I don't think the Pats make it. I think the Jets will overtake them, personally. Mike White is flinging the ball right now. I know, dude. Like Zach Wilson. I, if He's I'm Mike guy. White, yep. I'm not. I'm not bringing my mom near Zach Wilson. Oh, you, well, first oh, of that all, that dude's no, got no. revenge on his well, mind. God, man. first of all, you know, first, you know, I still think that was just hell. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if, did you see Antonio Brown's tweet the other day? I did. I did. With so, uh, yeah, with what's Giselle? going on there? So I, I see. I looked at the thread because at first mm-hmm. it's obviously. Is that there's no way that's just sell? Like, is sure, that sell? Because yeah. it looked right. damn, it, damn close. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I seen uh, some, you know, replies to the, like, you know, in the thread that mm-hmm. it's this other Twitter person, YouTuber type deal. I mean, and I don't know. I, I seen know, a couple man. of them that said that, like, it's not actually just sell, it's some other person. So I'm going to assume it's that way because there's reports of just sell with her jujitsu instructor. That's true. Out but hey, beach. maybe she's just playing the field. You don't know. Dude, maybe maybe you know? she is. No I mean, imagine if Antonio Brown is booming like that. I mean, that is just talk about revenge. What happened with his arrest? Like, what know. happened with him being surrounded with cops? Did that just go away? Were they just like, you know, it's, it's AB. Just Kanye me. threw some money around and got his uh, what head of a marketing and <laughs> sports agency. <laughs> it's just, it's you know, that, I don't know why everyone left on to sports because you just can't do what Kanye is doing right now but that's, Dude, Kanye that's a whole other thing <sighs> yeah poor guy yeah <laughs> poor guy um but yeah <sighs> and this is what I bring up in my podcast I just posted it today it's on it'll be it's already up but um I want to get your opinion do you think Tom Brady's done I I don't I think and do he's and, done and, winning do you think he's done and if he is done do you think the divorce was the biggest reason why <laughs> I think, first of all, I think he should have just probably not came back this year. And maybe he's not winning that way. Yeah, I think this was. He should have just retired. He said he would rather lose and play than not play. And I think when this season's over, he's going to look around and try to find a different team to take him. Because Tampa Bay's just, I don't think they got it right now. They're just, they're not going to another Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Not the way they're constructed. But I don't think there's anyone that wants it. He's going to be, what, 46 years old? He has played like shit this year. Let's be honest. Absolute he has just shit. played awful. And I mean, to be fair, apparently he's real depressed. <laughs> There's been a lot of shit that came out. I would be de- about I mean, a divorce? his mental Come on, state like that, being. Mm-hmm. That takes but a lot of energy. I hope he retires, man. There's life after sports. You know, I mean, uh, he could do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, time I mean, to move on. Sports analyst job, dude. Like, just mm-hmm. zoom in. Same with same with Rogers. You know, just it, just Ooh, walk away. Rogers, another t- Jordan Love. Oh, that was a good half of a football he played. The other <sighs> it was, but he's had some stank stank yeah. games too. So I'm not sold on Jordan Love by any oh, means, but yeah. I'm also not so- sold on bringing Aaron Rodgers back because it's like <laughs> you don't have anything around him. You don't got no. Devonte Adams. No, Christian more. Watson. Is breaking out, but man, I mean, talk about lucky football though. That touchdown ratio, I mean, it's going to go down. But whew. so I made a bet with my uh, my friend Drew, and he's a Packer fan. I bet at the beginning of the season that any Steeler rookie will be 
in the higher like higher ranked as rookie of the year than Christian Watson. And Ooh. at first it seemed good because I had Kenny Pickett and George Pickett. Yep. So those and are my Pickens two. Looked good starting. Yeah. yeah. And, and then and then Christian Watson all of a sudden, boom, got eight touchdowns in like three games. I'm like, shit, Fire. I'm about to lose that bet for sure. Oh, he won me some games. Great waiver wire pickup. I love Christian you Watson. You got him on your team? I did. Yeah. Staying. Uh-huh. God damn it. Yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. Are you in Paid the playoffs? attention this year? Oh, I'm first seed. I'm on buy this week, baby. <laughs> You're looking for those back-to-back championships right oh, here. Oh, shit. That's what we're going for. Was I uh-huh. in your league last year? Or yeah, was that... you were in it. You were in it. You and JC were both in it. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you won it last year too? I did. But I had, uh, what, Cooper Cup, Debo. Uh, my team was stacked last year. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Just insane. But, okay. I mean, Cooper Cup in the sixth round. What? Whew. That's a win. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper Cup. That man is just fucking legendary. Um. So we got five minutes left. I don't know. Can you see that time right. right there? Yeah, I think. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got five there. minutes left. Do you have any other things you want to discuss? Anything you uh, want? There's one last thing I wanted to touch on, and okay. that is going to be what are the Broncos going to do? You think – I mean, I think Hackett has to be fired. Oh, that, oh the coach? Oh, Fuck it. Oh, gone. I think after the he should have been gone. After yes, the first I'm game. Just, okay. Out, yep. dude. And this is one of the things I found really interesting is Jeff Saturday has been a better hire than Nathaniel Hackett. And I don't, I mean, you can argue it a little bit for sure, but I mean, the Colts have played some bad games, but man, yeah. they played a lot better since he took over they and have. he has, you know, I just, I think it's crazy that I think at the end of the day, after the season, you will say Jeff Saturday was a better hire than the you had and not giving Jeff Saturday any real props, but mm-hmm. Hackett has been that bad. I mean, good God. How do you hire this guy? I don't know how he got through the process. I don't even know who he pick. is, to be honest with you. So he was the Packers' offensive coordinator. So he came out of a uh, mm, came out of Green Bay and fucking Matt Lafleur. Matt Lafleur. Okay. La. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's why you hire him because they had such a great offense. But at the same time, Aaron Rodgers. They had such a great Devonte Adams. Yeah, yeah, they had I mean, Aaron Rodgers, like, Devonte. So that much. was the offense. Like unless right, you bring you them with, yeah, I don't know what you're planning to do with that. But that was crazy, and then. uh what do you think about the Steelers, man? Can you pick it to see the future? Dude. I'll tell you this. He, Mitch ain't. Mitch ain't. Mason oh, Mitch ain't. Mitch is not. And no. we no, have Mitch. Kenny Pickett out the first round. So, yeah. I, I, here's the thing with Kenny Pickett is it, it's tough to give him a full, like, analysis because he not only is he a rookie, but he doesn't mm. necessarily have the best O-line. I mean, our no. offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, might be the worst – Offense coordinator in the league. Didn't even know he was the coordinator. I don't know the name. That's, yeah, that's it, never good. Exactly. It's that's never thing. good. No yeah. one knows the name. And guess what? <laughs> Once he's not our offensive coordinator, no one's going to sign him. And Ever. that's been the problem with Pittsburgh. I mean, Mike Tomlin, you think about, like, you know, uh, what's his name? out? Sean McVay, he has a coaching tree. You know? Oh, yeah. Shanahan. Shanahan. Look at Shanahan's tree mm-hmm. right now. Solid. Exactly. McVay. Oh, yeah. He's got some great guys. Mike Tomlin, there is no coaching tree. It's a coaching stick. It's it's, it's Mike Tomlin, and that's <laughs> it. Every one of his other hires are not there. So, I mean, I like that's what the I Steelers' see. MO, though. Look at Cowan. I mm-hmm. mean, Bill or Bill Cower. I'm sorry. Yeah. Cowan. yeah. Shit. But, I mean, he was there forever. You mm-hmm. never really saw anything come of his guys. But, it, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm going to roll with Kenny Pickett for another year. I mean, I, I don't hate what oh, I, I see Oh, I think at you all. have to for sure. Yeah. I just – he's shown some flashes for sure, but, man. Yeah. Fryermuth has really come into his own this year. He's, yeah, dude. Yeah. Fryermuth, uh, I just seen, was the second highest graded tight end coming into this week right behind Travis no Kelsey. No kidding. So that's, that's – That's impressive. Promising, dude. I never would have guessed that, but that yeah. is definitely promising. Um, But, no, man, we're running out of time right here. Um, It's been a fucking – this thing is – flew by like that man yeah man no charles kidding. the eighth my boy i mean hey i'm gonna have you back on for some time I'm absolutely man you. anytime coming back oh on. for sure anytime Happy um to- anything we can plug any your twitter i mean what- i mean yeah man follow me charles the eighth um yeah, I'm mostly tweeting about shoe stuff, honestly. Um, uh-huh. Big sneakerhead, uh, mm-hmm. collect giant Jordans and Nikes. So if you follow me on Twitter, you can see a lot of shoe stuff, but you can see some sports stuff mixed in there too. And, uh, you know, obviously supporting the podcast. You'll see a lot of retweets. But, uh, Absolutely. And yeah, I get appreciate, out there and follow me. I appreciate everything you've, you know, you're always you're always up to date with my shit, and I appreciate that. Man. Oh, it for means, sure. It means the yeah. fucking world to me. Going to the um, top. <laughs> with, that, <laughs> with that being said, man, I um, want to give you a big shout out, and uh, I hope you – I hope you just enjoy your day. Um, 
I suck at closing stuff out, but it's good, man. No one hey, ever knows man. what to say at the end, but <laughs> it's been a pleasure know, for right? sure. Hey, for sure, man. Hey, we'll, we'll be, we'll be in touch. You already know. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, man. I'm excited to see this thing go up. Should yep. be. Absolutely. Should be fun. Yep. All right, man. Hey, take care. Brush your hair. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a good one. Yep. All right. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that full length interview. We have a huge announcement. I won't make it today, but on Tuesday, next Tuesday, I will see you guys back here, same time. Huge announcement to make. I think you guys will love it. And yeah, have a good week 15, guys. For all you teams, fans out there of teams who are still in the playoffs, keep on kicking, keep on fighting, don't let up. I know I'm going to be cheering my ass off for the Pittsburgh Steelers like we're in the goddamn Super Bowl. And this is what it's about, guys. Have a blessed one. Take care. Have a good one. T-Bloom will see you next Tuesday. T-Bloom, out.